I think yeah, we were going I, to say the same to, thing. Um, well, no, I, I want to answer some perhaps some general things that, that people came yes. up with and just um, comment on a couple of things that Jimmy said. Um, <clears throat> can't stress enough the importance of social connection for the kids. Mm. Um, and I'm going to give you just a, a little anecdote. Uh, my niece is in grade six and she's really upset about all that she's missing out on in grade six, which completely understand. Um, in the first lockdown that we had, she struggled quite a bit. In this second lockdown, she's actually got a lot better because her parents have enabled her, and they weren't doing this because she was only in grade six, but have enabled her to have time with her friends while they're working. And what I'm trying to encourage uh, a lot of our students, yes, they spend a lot of time on their social networks, but sometimes it's really important for students to be able to share their work. When we're in a classroom and we set them a task in the classroom, then they work in pairs or they work in small groups and they get obviously get a lot out of that and they're supporting each other and kids are explaining things to other kids probably better than we as teachers explain to them. So that's something to really encourage, like they need to stay connected with their friends if they can, if they've got a task to do for humanities or for English, talk about it with their friends, share it with their friends, work on it with their friends. It doesn't matter if they send in the same answers to the teacher, they're not tests. Yeah, so, you know, like actually encourage that. That then might um, get them off the actual social media side of things a little bit because they're actually spending time with their best friends working, you know, doing some schoolwork together. So I can't stress that enough. Another thing that um, a couple of people have mentioned is in terms of workloads and, you know, are kids going to be behind? For year seven to nine students, there is definitely a reduced workload. There needs to be a reduced workload. It is really difficult for our year seven and eight students and some of our year nines to do eight or nine different subjects. You know, it's a crazy thing to be attempting uh, while we're doing online learning. So a couple of things. If that is the case, like your child is just bamboozled because there's too many tasks to do in a week because they're doing nine subjects, please notify your house. Um, negotiations can be made without causing stress or feeling bad about not doing everything, whatever. And we will sort of try and work out what is the best formula for your child. In terms of are the kids missing out on work? No, the kids aren't missing out on work. The aim is to develop skills. So students won't be behind if they do the tasks that they're being asked to do. The content is less but the aim is that they still are developing the skills that they'll need to proceed to the next year. So I wouldn't be concerned about um, them being behind. Having said that, our year 11 teachers, of course our year 12 teachers have to do all the work. You know, we can't, we can't slacken off with the year 12s. And our year 11 teachers have been asked to give them as much as possible uh, because for some year 11 subjects, you need to understand the content from year 11 to roll into year 12, obviously. So the year 11s and 12s particularly are being worked. Um, but with the 7s, 8s and 9s, and I just note that Cheryl put up a post, yep, the school is happy to um, reduce the number of classes that a, that a child needs to do if they're overwhelmed by, by the classes. I saw a couple of posts that said my child is doing one subject per day. Um, fantastic, you know, and if there's any concerns about your child not submitting something in on time, we can, ex <coughs> excuse me, we can ex explain to different teachers how your child is going about approaching their work. And can I just butt in there? Um, I think that's where the houses, so the kids and, and yourself as parents need to be reaching out to the houses because that is that is our role to help you and, and the students through this difficult time. So we can help with contacting teachers if the kids are too 
um, scared, like sometimes kids are scared to talk to teachers or a bit, bit shy. So that's where we're there to also help with that. Also to answer your questions as well. So you can reach out to the house at any time and we will get back to you within the day, if not the next day, and answer your questions and help with the transition from, from being too hard and the kids not being able to engage into actually getting back into working in a normal routine. Because it might be that they need to set up a plan for their day. It could be just the little things. And I know we're three or four weeks in, but still those little things make a big difference. So reach out to your houses as well. Sorry, Dale. No, that, that is perfectly fine. But And following on from that, some of you may be aware that we do have an on-site learning program happening. Now, the direction from the Department of Education is that we have an on-site learning program to support students of, of parents who are as the essential workers in this stage four, but also to support vulnerable kids. For us, that is any student that needs some support. Uh, so we've got kids that might be coming in for a half a day or one day a week. And in that time, someone sits down with them, someone works through what learning tasks or what um, weekly checkpoints they have to do for the week and, you know, helps them through it. They might help them make contact with their teachers. Some kids are still struggling with all the different teams meetings, all those sorts of things. So if, you know, you are really worried about your child or a child might need to come in for you know half a day or a day a week uh, to have a bit of a break and you know actually socialize with some other kids you know you can't pick and choose which kids we've got a whole range of kids so on average we have 16 to 20 kids coming in every day and they are extremely well looked after um, fairly structured uh, in terms of you know they're there to do some work but they get a lot of support and they get to see some other kids. We are quite open. We're allowed to. It's not breaking the stage four restrictions at all. We are here to support the kids as best we can. So if, uh, again, contact your house or you can um, contact me um, and we can certainly put kids down on the roster because that's what we're there for.